Now, I recently took this photograph uh, in Death Valley. It's an area called Mesquite Flats, and these are the famous um, Death Valley dunes. This is the east end of the dunes. Most people go to the west end, which has the bigger, the bigger dunes, and these are smaller. They're only about 40 feet high. Um, but what really strikes me about this, and uh, my uh, friend and I walked up to this. Um, this was actually on the winter solstice. And uh, the sun was setting fast. We walked up to this and looked, to each, uh, looked at each other and went, I've never seen anything like this. I'm not exactly sure how this happened, but the textures that are present here are, are just stunning. And I feel very lucky to have been there at that moment because the light as you see it here, probably lasted 10 or 15 minutes. So when we first walked up, you could see the potential, and you could hope that it was going to develop as the sun went down. But it really didn't come together until the last few minutes of the day. And being out in the desert, and in this particular location, the sun sets behind the mountains, it's as though the lights in the heavens simply go out, and you're done for the day. So one hurries to set up and take the photograph and of course the textures in this and the shapes are just otherworldly. That's one of the things I really like about this image is that the light is almost parallel to the ground and the shadows are extremely deep. There's, there's, no, there's no such thing as real shadow or highlight in this photograph and that's just fine with me because those mysteries that are scattered here and there in this, in this field of dunes um, just adds to the, the sort of non-earthly feeling that one gets when looking at it. And I've never seen ripples and textures like this in sand dunes in my life. It, it's just an, an amazing combination of shapes and textures and light and shadow. And I feel very lucky that the lighting was as it was that day. If, if one went at a different time of year, say in June or July, um, it, it really doesn't have this kind of angle and create these kinds of textures that you see in this particular image. Now, I, I was shooting with a, a digital camera, so the original is in color, but it's very much a monochromatic image except for the blue sky, so I converted it to black and white. And this is one of my all-time favorite images. The more I look at it, the more I get out of it, and it's, it's really made an impression on me that um, not only can you not plan everything, but there are things out there to photograph that are there for 10 minutes and they're gone forever. I think the timing issue is so important for photographers. Um, being ready at any time, having the camera with you at any time, to take advantage of the light, the moment, the uh, experience, when it happens. And of course, to train your eye to find those moments and recognize them. This is such as another sculptural image. It's the shadows and the midtones, uh, more than the highlights. The shadows and the midtones just interact with this undulation that is so. It's actually very reminiscent of um, an abstraction of the female body, to me. Uh, if I think of some of the early abstraction painters. I, I could see pre-cubist uh, when you were when they were just trying to bring the shape down into the essential. That's what I see here very very much. I see a reclining woman and a uh, curved sofa and all all this kind of again. It's that misspent youth of mine in the museums. I I can't just look at shapes like this and not think of a Matisse or a, a oh so many of the, of the painters that I really enjoy. The angles, the, the, the choice that uh, David made of how to compose this picture I think is important and you have to look at sometimes while we as photographers don't think out our pictures quite with the analytical mind we are using a certain kind of knowledge that we already have developed over the decades so that if you look at the balance and also the lack of balance in some places, um, you have an open space uh, in this, uh, this cup type of space uh, that, that is 
the weight is to the right of the picture. And it's balanced by a soft undulation to the left. I like that kind of imbalance. I find that in great art, it's the imbalance that often takes us to new places. Uh, and yet there is great harmony in this picture. Uh, the sky uh, is almost the exact, well, not, it's, it, it balances the foreground very nicely. It's, um, it takes up much more of the picture than the foreground does, so that it, its balance point is the beginning of the dunes. Uh, there's a lot that you can see in this picture, but it was the moment. It was when David saw that picture, he composed it instinctively. And that's why I keep saying to everybody who's just beginning photo photography, take as many pictures as you can and see how many angles you can get from the same scene until you can instinctively compose a picture like this. It's going to take you decades to do it because this is a master uh, stroke this moment. But that's the aim. It's interesting that you brought that, that last point up, which is, you know, move the camera and, and take another shot. And the fact is, is that I spent the 10 or 15 minutes that I had the light moving the camera six inches at a time and, and trying different frames or different ways of framing this. And I couldn't really see what I was doing through the viewfinder as well as I can see it on the computer screen when I get back to the studio. And I do the same thing with studio lighting, by the way. I don't move lights three feet. I move them an inch and a half. And so I was moving the camera, but remember the sun is moving at the same time, but I'm moving the camera trying to take advantage of the complexity that's present in the scene. And you can't really analyze that. You just have to understand that it's worthwhile to move the camera a small amount, that small amounts do make a difference. And remember also when you're working a landscape that the light is changing even if you don't perceive it. And so it was a very insightful thing that you said. And I didn't even remember I had been doing that until you brought it up just now.